My name is Benjamin Carey. I'm an English teacher at the North China Institute for Aerospace Engineering. I want to tell you about this school because this is where the China dream begins. Now, for me, the China dream started when I was eight years old. I was just a boy reading a book about China, and I remember feeling that there was a sense of wonder. I wanted to come here so much. Well, I didn't get to see my dream come true until eight years ago. Back in 2012, I finally decided to leave my home, say goodbye to my family, and I came to China, having no idea what to expect. I couldn't speak Chinese. I didn't know any people in China. I had no friends. So I came here with nothing. But what I found here was amazing. First off, I found this job, an English teacher. But it's more than that. Because when I came to this school, when I came to NCIAE, it was like coming home to family. My teaching colleagues are like friends to me. They're, they're like an aunt and an uncle or brothers and sisters. They took care of me. They helped me find food. They helped me find a place to stay. They made China feel like a home. My students, my students are wonderful. They are so eager to learn, and I'm so happy to be their teacher. For them, they are seeking the China dream too, here to get a good education. And as an American teacher here, I just want to give them the best possible English education I can because I believe in them. I believe in their dreams. And they are so much fun to teach. Each year I have so many students that come into my classrooms eager to learn, so happy to be in that classroom with the books in front of them, with a teacher talking with them. They are what make teaching here so much fun because they are the life of the school. And being a teacher for them, it's one of the biggest joys of my life. So you could say, yeah, I've definitely found the China dream. It's great being able to be here, to be part of this. It, it's great being able to be a teacher, helping students to grow. It's great working with the wonderful staff here. And best of all, I feel proud of China. I, I'm proud of what the government and its leaders have built here. And I'm proud that I could be welcomed and being a part of this. I chose to stay in China during the epidemic because I believed in the ability of the Chinese government to control this sickness. During the epidemic, I contacted my relatives in the U.S. and they sent so many videos to me giving encouragement to the people of China. And uh, most of my friends back home said, Zhongguo, uh, Jiao! And we put all these things into a big video. We support you, China! We support China! China is strong! We support you! China, we support you. China, we support you. China, we support you. We love you, China. We support you, China. We support you, China. We love 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 you, we support you. Wuhan, Jiayo. Zhongguo, Jiayo. Stay strong, stay healthy. We are with you. Wuhan, Jiayo. Zhongguo, Jiayo. And then, when the sickness came to America, a lot of my friends here in China also sent their condolences to my family. It was one big global family, Chinese, Americans, and people all over the world, encouraging one another, and it brought me so much hope. Now, my school has done an amazing job during this time. The school was, of course, closed during the epidemic in order to control the situation, but now it's the fall the classes are open again, the students are back, and I'm so excited to be back into the classroom sharing my experiences with my students. It's good to have the school open. I'm also grateful to my workmates, my colleagues, uh, the school because of the wonderful job that they've done taking care of me and my family. 
And I'm thankful to the Chinese government because they have handled this sickness in such an amazing way. They're an example to the rest of the world. I think what Americans need to do to handle this outbreak is to follow China's example. And I remember back a little while ago, there was a case in Beijing at this big market. And one of the first things I saw that China did was they responded by sending a lot of workers there. They did millions of tests. They quarantined the areas. And you could see they were on top of this very, very quickly. That is something that has not really been seen in America so much. And that's something that needs a quick response. Another good example I think uh, China does well is that uh, when you go into a mall, you have to scan a QR code and with your attached to your phone number, and this shows where you've been. And if you have a green arrow, you're okay to enter. If you have been in an infected area in the last 14 days, then you're not allowed to enter. And I think that is actually a very, very good policy to have. Something that I know America doesn't have and they could use to implement something like that. My words to the Chinese people and the American people are the same. And that is, remember your people at heart. It's much happier to go through life as friends than it is to go through life as enemies. And so let's focus on that. Let's not focus on what makes us different, but let's focus on these core ideas of family and community. These bring us together. And then my Chinese friends can teach me Tai Chi. My American friends can teach me how to ride a bull <laughs> or any number of things. And we can share the differences of our culture. And then, but on the, the deep side, we focus on being friends. And that's the most important.